Welcome to another episode of Ridiculous Reverb Listings. I'm your host, Fluff, and you know what? I know I say this every video. It's going to be, be a mediocre video. It's not the greatest episode. It's, it's a mediocre episode. Just kidding. <laughs> These are always great. These are always a good time. If you have your own reverb listing, now you can just go on over to my website, riftsandbeards.net, and just submit a listing there. You don't have to worry about emailing me. Go over to the website, and while you're there, sign up for the new newsletter where I'm going to be giving away stuff and templates and all that stuff. Yeah. Riftsandbeards.net. Submit a listing. Be on the show. Let's get into it, shall we? G-E-E-L-34, signed by Alexander Dumble, date in 1989. So for those of you who don't know, Alex Dumble, Alexander Dumble, uh, just recently passed away. Famous ant maker to, you know, Steve Ray Vaughan, Eric Johnson, John Mayer. Uh, his amps are like, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars for some reason. I don't know why. And he signed a tube in 1989. He initialed it A.D. Okay. You know, a literally anyone could have done that. I could have done that. You don't know it wasn't me. Where's your proof? And the price is 2500 bucks. Let's see what the description says. Maybe they have some proof. Maybe. Um, sell for one item each. Use the 34 GE made in USA from Dumble Overdrive Special. Selected by Alexander Dumble in 1989. Signed by Alexander Dumble. It's 100% it's real. Uh, for more details, you can DM me. Uh, the Dumble amp is from Thailand, from Bangkok. I have a picture of this amp from the artist, from the owner artist, and this amp replaces a new tube to four match. I don't know what that says, but uh, that <laughs> trying to make a quick buck, and I respect the hustle. Let's. I want to be completely clear about that. I respect the hustle. I'm about to give this one a big old nope, though. Next listing. Wait, hang on. 1969 Fender Telecaster neck case hardware and Fender Bixby bridge pickups. Where's the body? <laughs> Where's the body? I see the case. You got the case. You got the neck. You got all the hardware. Cool. All cool stuff. Yeah, awesome. Okay. What? Wait. 1969 Fender Telecaster all original parts. Everything in the photos. The body was damaged and lost. I lost the body. I lost the part of the guitar that makes it an actual guitar. This makes a great project or replacement part inventory. Now, I will give you It's great it for parts. Yeah, I'd be I'd be part, parting this out. You still want five thousand dollars for all this stuff. Now it's worth something. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying that seems <laughs> it seems a little ridiculous. I don't know. Nineteen sixty-nine. A guitar with no body, basically. Wouldn't it be funny if he had it strung up like the strings are still like, I have the strings too, but I just lost the body. Sorry. <laughs> Next listing. Metasonics TH2. Bu bu Metasonics TX TX2 butt probe. <laughs> no way. Was someone really like I just named it a butt probe? And it's it's like brown with the bloody and it's there's an alien and a, a and there's a shove it button. No way. 
No way. I mean, Metasonics it was a real company. I have never seen or heard of this pedal. Um, it can accept guitar mic or line level signals. Um, wh what the hell is this? Oh, it's a tube distortion filter effect. So it's a tube. So it adds saturation and drive and grit. I'm assuming just tons and tons of gain. There <laughs> controls include ream and fist. Okay. This is a PG show. Butt probe, absolutely ridiculous. Next listing. This is an ended listing. However, this is a restored Hurricane Katrina Heritage Les Paul. $12,500. Let's, uh, let's see what this says. For your consideration is a 1984 Heritage Les Paul restored as a Gibson. Okay. It's already weird. Legend has it. The guitar was purchased in New Orleans in 1984 and subsequently played at the 84 World's Fair. Afterwards, it was played on a riverboat before it was retired to a closet. When Hurricane Katrina came around, the guitar was submerged in seven feet of water for an extended time. The headstock was broken off and the hardware removed, all subsequently lost. I acquired the husk and had the guitar restored as a Gibson with gold hardware. The electronics come from a 2010 Les Paul Traditional Pro exclusive. The hardware consists of USA parts. This guitar plays and sounds wonderful. Much mojo. Bro, okay, so it started off as a heritage and it is now kind of being passed off as a Gibson. I mean, you're not being, you're not being malicious about it. I'm just saying you put a Gibson headstock because it was more common and easier to retrofit. Although it'll never look right. So it'll always look like a counterfeit in my opinion, even though it's, I'm not saying it's a counterfeit. I'm just saying like if someone were to just look at it, it wouldn't look right. Um, so this was submerged. This sat in water for a while, an 84 heritage. And you know what? You clearly do pretty all right work. My question is why? Like I get you were probably doing it for a hobby, but trying to flip it for like a whole bunch of money. Why? Great documentation. Yep, you put some burst bruckers in there. I don't know, man. To each his own. However, $12,500 for a, a 1984 guitar that sat in water and had all sorts of crazy water damage? I don't... I would not personally buy that. Just saying. Next listing. Alley Cat Cadillac 59 2010's pink. Oh my goodness. This is the best worst guitar I've ever seen in my life. What? What is, what is what is that? What is what is going on right here? <laughs> Dude, that's wild. That is wild. I mean, it's ugly as sin. Okay, let's read to the description. And it's in French. So I have no idea what this says. Uh, I can assume it's made to look like a 59 Cadillac. Uh, Cadillac pink made by an Australian luthier. Let me tell you something. Uh, that, that neck joint was not made by no luthier. This was an art guy that sculpted a really crappy guitar into some wild shape because he had some some tail fins, some tail fin parts from a Cadillac. That's what this is. Uh, it's nuts. That is absolutely ridiculous. This is the definition of this series. Um, also, they want almost $10,000 for this thing. That, bro, that is, 
I'm getting a panic attack just looking at this. Next listing. And last but not least, Tom DeLonge's Mesa Boogie Tri-Axis preamp for $8,500. Marked down from $10,000. Uh, this is what came from uh, one of his uh, reverb auctions a couple years ago. Uh, it toured with him for a long time. Um, oh, not a couple years ago. Last year. Okay. Yep, it's a beat up Tom DeLong Mesa Boogie Tri Axis. And uh, this was his, and he signed a COA. So there is that. Oh, dude, that is. That's pretty shot, if I'm going to be honest with you. Also, for what it's worth, uh, Tom thinks. These uh, crazy high prices for all of his signature stuff is hilarious. Facts. Just so you guys know. Uh, Traxxas is cool. Typically, this is probably worth, if this wasn't owned by Tom DeLong, this is probably worth, eh, you know, 1200 bucks or so. 12 1400 maybe. It's pretty beat up. It's pretty toured because it was very toured. I mean, like it's missing a knob and stuff like, you know, whatever. Tom DeLong's Maze of Boogie Tracks is preamp. $8,500. Nope. And that does it for this episode of Ridiculous Reverb Listings. If you would like to submit your own reverb listing, head on over to riftsandbeards.net and I will uh, I will see you in the next one. Fluff out.